Early French horns were just hunting horns used for hunters to signal each other, and they usually just made short little horn calls. And one of the more popular ones was shaped like a large loop, so it was convenient for them to carry on their shoulders. Starting in the 1500s, these looped horns made their way into musical ensembles. As time went on, people started to favor larger bells. These horns we now call natural horns. Around this time, music for horns tended to stay in the upper register because there were more notes that composers could work with. In the 1600s, horn players started using crooks, or large removable slides, in order for them to change keys, rather than just having to have multiple horns in different keys. Also around this time, hand stopping became a very common practice, which altered pitch. Because of hand stopping, horn parts started to become a lot more complicated and interesting. Rather than just being for effect, horns were used for more important things. They even played melodies here and there. The introduction of valves in brass instruments in the 1800s was a huge game changer for brass instruments, and it completely set the stage for modern brass playing. In their simplest form, brass instruments are just tubes. More specifically, they're open and closed tubes, with one end being the open end of the instrument where the sound comes out, and the other end being the closed end where the lips meet the instrument. All brass instruments are pipes containing their own natural resonance frequencies, and the lips, which are used to play brass instruments, also have their own natural frequencies. So a sound is produced on a brass instrument when the lips vibrate sympathetically with the natural resonance frequencies of the instrument itself. Because they are open and closed systems, brass instruments can only produce scanning waves on odd-numbered harmonics of the harmonic series. Because of this, the tuning of most brass instruments is such that the first pitch of the harmonic series is based off the first harmonic of the true fundamental. The true fundamental of brass instruments is often played as a pedal tone, which is not actually a member of the harmonic series of the instrument. This intonation system produces an approximation of an actual harmonic series but the problem with it is that the upper harmonics of the instrument become really out of tune. To fix this, brass instrument makers added flared bores and bells to the instrument to help move the intervals closer together and to increase projection. Additionally, they also created mouthpieces to help playing the instrument be easier and to help curb the sharpness of upper harmonics. <laughs> Because earlier brass instruments could only play within the harmonic series, their usage in music was somewhat limited. Because of their volume output and limited range, brass instruments were typically used only either to reinforce the harmony of a piece or to provide impact at dramatic points in the piece. This is often seen in fanfares. Classical composers would often score brass instruments along with the timpani as a more percussive element to provide rhythm and emphasis. In Germany, this was so common that trumpeters and timpani players were often grouped into the same guild, like the Imperial Trumpeters and Kettle Drummers guilds. If a brass instrument was to be played melodically, it could only do so in the extreme upper harmonics of the instrument, where the notes are close enough together to be able to play scales. Composers in the Baroque era, such as Bach, often took advantage of this. However, this technique was difficult for a lot of players. Because brass instruments could only play within the harmonic series of a specific pitch, 
there existed many horns and trumpets that were tuned in different keys in order to accommodate the different keys composers wished to score them within. Before valves were created, a lot of instruments had crooks, which were explained earlier in this video. Even so, the limitations of an instrument's key are difficult to overcome, and many composers used early brass instruments sparingly, especially in pieces with many key changes or modulations. Beethoven was the first composer to give brass instruments a larger role in the orchestra, being the first to score trombones into a major orchestral work, and to give trumpets and horns more varied and interesting parts. His fifth and ninth symphonies are great examples of this. So this is our replica horn here, our replica natural horn. The body of the horn is made with a hose, a thin hose, that we just cut to tune. Uh, these horns are tuned in E flat. Uh, they're held together here, as you can see, with some cable ties. At the end of the instrument here, we have this cooking funnel that we use to serve as a bell. Uh, it's just attached to this rubber sleeve, which is taped to the body of the horn. And then the other end here, we have normal mouthpieces. Mine is a trumpet mouthpiece and Evans is a horn mouthpiece. It's a perfect fit. And that's the natural horn. Some differences between the natural horn uh, that we made and other natural horns, uh, real ones. Uh, there's no taper in the body of this horn because obviously this is, a, this is a hose, so you can't, there's no way for us to make a taper for it. Because of that, it affects the intonation. Uh, the intervals will not be as tune, in tune because of the lack of taper here. And also, the, uh, the bell of the horn, because obviously this doesn't fit in a hand, you cannot do hand technique on our horn like you can with a real natural horn. But other than that, uh, the system works quite similarly to a real natural horn. We can recreate the harmonic series. Uh, and yeah, that is our natural horn. Here's a knock -in. It's supposed to be an octave, but the top note is much sharper. And I'll show you on this, and of course it'll be more in tune because of the flare here. 